We're gonna be at Disney's Hollywood Studios today, going back to the year 1998. We're gonna be discussing a little film by the name of Armageddon and talk about some weird history here at Disney's Hollywood Studios that pertains to Armageddon. Now. Let's take a closer look. Now let's travel back to the year 1998. This place, at the time was Disney MGM Studios. They had not changed the name yet, but they were almost, almost at their 10 year celebration. And a company called Touchstone Pictures produced a video called Armageddon, a major motion picture, small major motion picture. It had a soundtrack by some band called Aerosmith. And uh, did you ever see this movie, Armageddon? Really? You saw that one? Yeah, honestly, that's a bad joke because I don't think anybody in the year 1998 did not see that film. That was a huge, huge film. And Touchstone was a Disney-owned corporation that Michael Eisner started. They had Hollywood pictures and Touchstone pictures, a part of the, the Disney family. That was a way they could like produce and do videos for, you know, adults, if you should call it that. Did you ever see the movie Armageddon? Of course. In theaters? I don't know if it was in theaters or I saw after. it in theaters yeah. with my mom. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Armageddon was a huge, huge film. Yeah, I went to the theater with my mom in 1998 and saw Armageddon. But that around the same time, it was like I did enter into the Twilight Zone because they made a movie called Deep Impact. And I saw that movie as well. And I got confused because I was like, did I just see this movie? But the year 1998, Aerosmith's Rock and Roller Coaster here, G-Force Records, was not open. It did not open until July of 1999. So maybe the summer blockbuster before that, 1998, made Disney think, hmm, Aerosmith would be a great pick. We've got a hit movie with them, Armageddon. I don't know. Is that the backstory of Rock and Roller Coaster, why they chose Aerosmith? But Rock and Roller Coaster is not operational at this time. I would walk in that way to see if there's anything from Armageddon inside, but we cannot get in. Disney is like that. They will pick something like one subject and they will do something completely with it, which reminds me of a certain attraction. When Disney was trying to build Splash Mountain, Michael Eisner wanted the attraction to be about the movie Splash with Daryl Hannah and Tom Hanks. Seriously, because the movie was doing so well, he thought it was gonna be huge. He thought it was a Tom Hanks film. It's got John Candy, Daryl Hannah. This movie is gonna be huge. It wasn't really that big. And I'm sure Michael Eisner thinking the same thing was like, hmm, Armageddon is doing so well. Aerosmith did the song for that. We'll make an Aerosmith attraction. I'm just, you know, spitballing that idea that probably came to Michael Eisner. It, it could not be a fact, but that's the way he thinks. So I could totally see that happening. We were gonna go inside the rock around the shop to see if there were any Armageddon remnants, but it's closed too. Did I mention they had the premiere for Armageddon out in Cape Canaveral here in Florida? Everyone showed up. Even Aerosmith performed at that premiere. And when this place first opened up, this was the focal point, the great movie ride, the Chinese theater. Well, that didn't last long. Disney was eager to put something in front of that Chinese theater. Now, at this time in 1998, the Backlot Tour here at MGM Studios was still a huge success. This place back then was still, you know, all about showing backlots and props and how movies were made. And all these photos were taken by my friend, Brian. I will put a link to his art page, support him, buy some of his vintage retro art he does for the parks and wrestling. Good friend of mine, shout out to him for letting me use his family's photos. Now let's get into this. And so of course here at Disney MGM Studios, they featured a few vehicles, a few props from Armageddon on the popular Backlot Tour. And remind me, we are gonna be talking about the Lights, Motors, Action Show, not only here, but in Paris. And that will nod to Lights, Motors, Action. All right, this is the first photo we're looking at. It's gonna be straight ahead here, you can see the armadillo vehicle from Armageddon and fans jumping up on the side of the little lift they had 
to see it. Imagine walking into this place. This is long before the Sorcerer Hat, and this is what you see here in front of the Chinese theater. That makes the Chinese theater look like this is Terminator or something. Like, it's it, it would probably terrify me as a kid. But this is what it looks like current day. The vehicle was here. Obviously, this has changed from the great movie ride now to Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. But 1998 was a, a weird and wild time here. Now you can see the old great movie ride sign right there, and it was still presented by Coca-Cola at this time. And you can see the armadillo vehicle. They had lights all around it, some grumble, like to make it look like it was on, you know, I don't know, an asteroid or a different planet. This just blows my mind because after that they would bring in the sorcerer mickey hat and it would sit here and block this for so long now that was the first thing these folks saw as they were walking down this theme park they would never do anything like that ever again nor would they do anything like that over at magic kingdom but disney always had to try something and figured it out this photo took place right here in front of the chinese theater and there's a plaque right in front of the armadillo vehicle from Armageddon. That same plaque can be seen still here at the park. Well, not the exact same plaque, the same style plaque, but now it has the opening day speech from Michael Eisner. And this plaque right here is like the closest that you can get. That's the kind of plaque I was talking about. They don't make these anymore. This is a Disney MGM Studio original plaque. And that's like the only remain of an old Disney MGM Studios sign. They have like a plaque over here talking about what props you were seeing. And this was the backside of the photo of the armadillo. Just a different perspective of it. But it all took place right here in this center courtyard at Disney MGM Studios. I believe until 2001, 2002. And they had a huge parade. I'm not sure if this is when they brought this vehicle to the Disney MGM Studios, or if this was just incorporated in a parade just to promote the film at the time. We're gonna match up one more photo of that vehicle, the Armadillo, going down Hollywood Boulevard towards the entrance. All right, straight ahead, this is the final photo we're gonna be matching up. You can see the Armadillo coming down Hollywood Boulevard here in a parade. I'm not sure if this was a reoccurring parade. I know nothing about this parade. I just found this photo online. Shout out to whoever took this photo. I believe it was from a news source, a newspaper, if that. And they had a full parade here with this vehicle. If you know more about the parade, please comment. Let's see how much history you can put out there with this video and your comments. So chime in, everyone talk if you saw this parade or if you saw this vehicle here. Bright suns, everyone. Welcome back to Galaxy's Edge mentioning the back lot tour and lights motors action that show took place right back over here at the disney mgm studios and they also had it out in paris so that makes me think like when they did the, the studios over in paris were they thinking let's just take what's really popular here at the disney mgm studios and bring it over there then they also thought let's make our own armageddon show and this was kind of like disney's answer to twister and backdraft you know they made like the armageddon experience and they also moved you guessed it the armageddon armadillo vehicle out to paris at the studios park and as far as i know that's where it remains even though the attraction no longer is there and i also thought about something when we had the backlot tour here they incorporated pearl harbor here. I wonder if we were like originally supposed to get a Pearl Harbor attraction. This is the kind of stuff that goes through my head. Now, if you're trying to find like actual film prop vehicles, the only thing you're really going to find is this vehicle here from Indiana Jones. There's a link above right now. I did a whole video on this, matching up some photos, debunking this here on the channel. Check it out if you haven't done so. And once again, we visited movie land here in the nostalgia world of the Disney parks at Disney's Hollywood Studios. Today was hot, but thanks for being my friend. And I will see you guys on the next adventure. Till then, stay weird. Goodbye.